Hey guys, welcome back to Snack Time. My name is Ben, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can easily back up your Docker volumes. And the volumes are important because that's where it's housing all of your data. The containers can be recreated. The volumes usually hold your important data that you can't really afford to lose. So I want to show you a really cool open source project that will allow you to back them up through a various different methods. We're going to be using SSH and also looking at the locally backup, but there's a bunch of other ones that we can also look at too. So if we hop in, the very first thing that we're going to go off to is we're going to going to look at our GitHub page for this, and that's GitHub slash often slash Docker dash volume backup. And as we scroll down, there's a couple of really helpful links that you're going to want to get familiar with. Uh, the first one is this, uh, you know, you can see this some very basic getting started for, you know, your Docker compose file. But I like to jump over to recipes. This is, has a whole bunch of really important things and will give you a good idea as far as uh, choosing you know, your method of backup. You know, where do you want it to go? Do you want it to go somewhere locally? Do you want it to go somewhere like in, on Dropbox or something or you know, Azure blob storage? You have a pretty wide selection. Um, all these ones, all these links, if you click on any of them, like if you do the SSH, it'll take you down to exactly what your Docker Compose file needs to be. Uh, this is really helpful. I kind of crafted my own and just to kind of add some extra features to it that I'll show you here in just a second. So if you want to use my examples, uh, it's again stored on my GitHub page. So if you go to GitHub slash snack time and then snack blah, 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 or you can just keep clicking. You'll see the, uh, you'll see I have my, my little YouTube a folder right here and underneath is my docker dash volume backup one thing you'll notice under my github page is i went ahead and downloaded the config reference it's also available obviously on the uh, the main github page but i just kind of wanted to be able to show you uh, this is where you'll be able to really customize the types of backups that you're going to be doing you can adjust the schedule by tweaking the the backup cron expression and all of these are environmental variables that you will be setting with your container and also there are ones that you can change uh, should you you know decide to, to do it on a different schedule all right so if we look up here i just wanted to point out here here's your cron it's explaining exactly how to set that up uh, we're not going to be really touching it so much but and if you do get confused on this a little bit, um, chat GPT is your friend and uh, it can uh, really help you kind of uh, navigate what each one of these little, you know, asterisks mean. All right, moving on from our reference file, let's just go ahead and jump into our Docker Compose slash SSH. And this is going to be my Docker Compose file that I'm going to use to create my container to uh, perform a backup to a remote SSH server or, you know, one on your local network. It really doesn't matter. Uh, let's do this. Let's copy and put this into Portainer so that I can make some changes as I go along. So I'm going to copy this raw file. I'm going to hop over to my Portainer and I'm going to create a new stack. I'm just going to call it Docker dash volume backup. I'm going to paste that in here. And once we have it into our container, let me go ahead and kind of describe what it's doing. Uh, so we're going to be downloading a uh, an image from Docker Hub uh, under the often user. Uh, just going to be getting the latest one out there. Uh, next up, I'm specifying some environmental variables. Uh, this is where we can put all of our settings, any of our customization. It's going to be within this field. All right, now the only thing I'm really telling it is the SSH host name, which this is the IP address that in my SSH server is running on. Uh, next up is the SSH port. Typically this is 22, but I always believe in kind of changing that off of 22 because port 22 usually gets hammered pretty hard. Uh, people are just trying to brute force their way into a server. So mine was 9006. Uh, next up is our username. Obviously we don't want to use root created a brand new username. 
and, and gave them login permissions. Uh, next is our path. This needs to be the absolute path, which when I say absolute path, I mean, you know, slash home slash backup. That's, you know, when I spot when I can type that into my Linux server, I can type in CD space and then type in that path and it'll get me right there no matter where I'm at. Um, I'm not doing something like, OK, well, I know I'm going to be signing into the home directory, so just back up SSH. It doesn't really work very well that way. So I'm going to leave it absolute. Next, next up is my volumes. So I want you to take a look, a very close look at this. Uh, the slash backup slash uh, my app backup is telling the program this is where you know my backups are going to be accessible. Uh, the RO is for read only. I'm currently looking under slash bar slash lib slash docker slash volumes because that's where Portainer puts all of my volumes. But if I wanted to be specific and only back up certain containers, you can do that. Uh, you would just kind of need to do a little bit of tweaking with this. So you'd be able to come in here and say, all right, well, I only want to back up or back up, let's say, Nginx. So let's pretend that's the name of my volume. It may not be. Um, you can find that under the volumes. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, OK, um, I'm going to also do Nginx here. So that kind of separates that out because you can't map a whole bunch of things to this one path. You kind of have to uh, add something after that. So as an example, maybe I'm running WordPress. So my volume is going to be under WordPress and I'm going to say, OK, well, back up uh, and then WordPress. So you can see my my directory structure here is going to be slash backup slash my my app backup slash uh, Nginx or WordPress. It's just folders that it's going to be creating. I'm fine to go ahead and back up everything. Uh, so next up is not anything you really need to change. Just saying, hey, uh, Docker's running, cool. Uh, next here is something that is very important. This is the location of my RSA key uh, that for my SSH server. Uh, you'll notice that there's no username and password under here other than you know just your username, no password, right? And that's because it uses RSA keys to gain access. And if you're not used to setting up uh, access to your SSH server with keys, uh, you probably should get used to it. I'll put an article down below on how to do that because it's a lot more secure and it's not something that can be really brute forced and it's something that this little guy you know, requires. So it's a good way to, to get into into the um, into that practice. And so this is just saying here uh, under home snack time SSH keys, my backup SSH dot key is should be pointed to my slash root uh, period SSH slash RDSA. Uh, this is the file name right here, and this is also the file name. So uh, just make sure that when you're whenever you are creating your key, that you specify the key full absolute path here, and also be very specific about this file name. You can't make this whatever you want because the program is just not going to know to look for that. So uh, lastly, I added this myself. I added an Etsy local time to, you know, it's going from the from the, uh, the host machine to the container. Container is dot uh, slash Etsy slash local time read only. And that's because I want my time zones to match. If my time zone for my container is off, whenever I do backups, it's going to have the timestamp of whatever my container has which may not be great and maybe a little confusing. It'll still back up. It's just you won't know exactly when it backed up without trying to go through the container and figure out what time zone it is. It's just a mess. Just just trust me on that. Uh, this is really the only thing you have to do for this guy. Uh, very, very easy, right? So I have this in here. Uh, I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm just going to go ahead and deploy this. And there you go. It's It's deployed. Like I said again at the beginning of this, there's no UI for you to to look. Uh, you'll know that it's backed up because files will start appearing on your SSH server. And if you go under here, you can go under uh, the 
the logs. And you can kind of see that it's scheduled, you know, it successfully scheduled uh, the, the backup, which, you know, that's fine. Like I said, there's really nothing to, to see here. <laughs> so. Nothing to see here, please. Uh, let's see. Um, one thing I do want to cover before we move on is some containers need to be powered off before they can be backed up. If you're backing up a database and you're just backing it up while it's running, there's a good chance that the backup that you have is not going to be, let's say, functional. Uh, it may have a file that it was like writing to and you backing up at that moment just has caused some some problems. So we may want to completely power it off. We also may want to do an SQL dump, which is also very po uh, possible with this. There is a command that you can run that it uses labels and uh, you can find that under the reference guide um, or under the recipes. So uh, let's see. Uh, for those instances where you do need to shut down the container before backing it up, which to be honest is probably the majority of them, I want to show you how to do that. So if we hop back under our recipes and we scroll all the way to the top, one of the things that it's going to talk about is stopping containers during backup. So we click on that little guy right here, and this will explain to you how to do this. Now, this was a little confusing because I wasn't quite sure if I needed to do this. Um, but basically, uh, if you read the very top paragraph here, it's saying that in many cases, uh, it is desirable to stop the container, blah, 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 blah. Um, the image can automatically stop and restart containers uh, and, and services by default, any container that is labeled docker dash volume dash backup dot blah, 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 uh, is equal to true will automatically be stopped. So I tested it, it works great, uh, but you may be a little confused on what to do with this statement and I'm going to help you out with that right now. So I'm going to copy this and I'm gonna keep in the back of my mind this needs to be true. Now let's head over to portainer. So say I'm working with this, uh, this word container and I want this to be powered off or oh, better yet. How about this? Uh, this Mariah DB. Let's do that one instead. That seems to be a little bit more practical. Let's click on this guy. And if we go under here and we scroll down, here are all of our labels. And in order to add one, we do need to edit this container. So let's go to the top. Let's click on duplicate and edit. And let's scroll down. And do you see where this tab that says labels? Click on that. You see that there's already a bunch of labels in here. But we're just going to add one here at the bottom. And then we're going to paste that label. And we're also going to say the value is true. We can type. Oh. All right, so we've set that. And now we just need to scroll up here and we just need to deploy that. It's okay, don't let this freak you out. Totally, we're gonna go ahead and replace that. Just says it's gonna replace the container. But then again, that's why we're backing up volumes because containers don't really matter. We can, we can create them and destroy them whenever we want. The volumes are what's most important. All right, once that's done recreating, if we go back under our MariahDB, we can scroll down and we see that uh, under labels, we now have docker dash volume stop during backup is now set to true. So that means if we are backing up this volume that this container is using, this is going to power this container down before you know it starts the backup. And then when it's done, it's going to power it back up for you. So another thing this has the ability to do is, is run on an on-demand basis, which means we don't have to have a container running all the time if we don't want to. We can just make it so that this command runs whenever we want it. Let's hop up back over to my GitHub page and go back one. And I have some notes here for you that might help out. And if you take a look at this, this is exactly how we can run it on just like a one off. And you'll see a lot of the same things exist that were in our Docker compose file. 
except this is just running as a command. And so you think each, each one, um, so at the end of each one of these sections, we have a little slash that just basically breaks it out so that it's a little easier for you to read. Uh, and at the very bottom here, this is the entry point uh, backup. That tells it just to go ahead and run this immediately. Whereas if you run it normally, it'll probably just end up scheduling a cron job and just sitting there doing nothing. Uh, so we want to make sure that this runs uh, immediately. And also we have the ability to do this locally. So this will create a backup of the volumes on the local machine. That can be really helpful if you don't have any sort of secondary server or anything like that. But let me show you how that works. All right, so I'm SSH'd into my server and I'm going just to paste that command. And you'll see a lot of the same things that we had in our Docker Compose file. You'll see our volumes, that's slash V, and it's just saying, hey, I want to back up my slash var slash lib docker volumes. And this is where you'll find it under the container. Read only, please. And here it is saying, um, you know, Docker's running. And this one is a little unfamiliar. This is saying put the backups in my dollar sign home. This is a variable that's on Linux that's identifies my home directory of the user that I'm signed in. And it's going to put the files that it backs up under slash archive, which will translate into this folder. So it's slash archive under the container and it's this folder on my host machine. Uh, next up is the uh, my little personal edition, the local time so that my file matches the same time. And next up, we have a new environment, environmental variable that we're not used to seeing. This is saying the backup file name. This allows us to specify what file name we want to put. So we could take this and put it in our Docker Compose file and use this as well. All of these environmental uh, variables are under the references guide. So take a look at that and kind of get familiar with it and you can really customize your backups. All right, so next up we have our uh, our entry point backup, which is essentially telling it, go ahead and run it now, don't wait. And then we have our uh, image that we're going to be pulling. So let's go ahead and run this and yeah, should be good. All right, so it's telling us it's stopping two out of the six containers. Uh, since we did have that label, I'll put it on another one too. Awesome. All right, so we've restarted. It says it's restarted two containers, which is cool. So if we do an LS, so I'm going to show you I am under my uh, slash home slash snack slash backups folder. And you see here are the file names. Let's list them. And here we go. We have one, actually a couple from the 20th, but this is my most recent one that that should match the the current time zone and and time. Yep. So 2315 and this was 2314. Cool. Well, that seemed to work fine. Uh, it's tarted, GZ'd it. It's now backed up. It's safe. Uh, and if we do have a problem with our Docker, we can take this and we can use this to restore our volumes. I'm not going to really cover the, the restoration part of this. Uh, basically, it really is just a matter of extracting the contents into whatever uh, like uh, folders you had your volumes in. So, well, hey guys, that pretty much sums up today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Otherwise, if you found this video helpful, please consider liking or subscribing. And until next time, take care, guys.